This is a special Sunday evening edition of our Weather Extreme video. This is for August 26. We'll spend some time and talk about Isaac and the possible impact on uh, not only coastal Alabama, but the inland part of the state as well. Uh, first off, uh, let's check our Gulf Shore Sky Cam. This was taken uh, late this afternoon. A big event is winding down, which is good. Uh, I mean, the event was great. It was the SEC Beach Fest. All of the college football coaches of the Southeastern Conference have been there. And uh, that is winding down, and now they're in the process of battening down the hatches since just moments ago. As I do this update, a hurricane warning has been posted for the Alabama Gulf Coast. Uh, first off, the big picture, and again, you see the little weakness in the flow uh, north of Texas. And the big question is, will that be able to turn Isaac northward, or will it keep on moving to the northwest uh, with time? And we'll talk about that as we go. Uh, there's a look at the uh, visible satellite imagery this afternoon of Isaac. And the center is pretty close to Key West, Florida. And uh, at this point, uh, you know, one of the issues, it looks like it's pulling in some drier air from the south side of that thing that's kind of wrapping into the east side of the circulation. And that by, might be one factor that it has not really gotten stronger. Uh, this thing has come off the coast of Cuba. There was fear it would be a hurricane by the time it reached Key West. And quite frankly, the impact on the Keys has been minimal. That's a Key West radar uh, that was uh, captured this afternoon. The circulation center, again, at that point was just south of Key West. And uh, there's a tornado watch in effect for much of South Florida. You can see the uh, tornado box in there. But uh, to my knowledge, there have been no tornadoes, no tornado warnings, and really no issues. So there's something within the structure of this thing that's... Uh, preventing it from getting stronger is it the dry air or something else well we'll just watch it with time there's a look at the pressure analysis this is coming off the ruck pressure is down to 998 millibars and should be a tad lower than that by the time you watch this there's that tornado watch uh, in effect for south florida uh, about to expire as i do this update but they'll probably reissue that and that that is certainly a favorable quadrant for tornado activity with a tropical system all right, modeling, this is the 18Z set, and of course it's all over the board, but clearly there has been a westward jog again today with the consensus being southeast Louisiana or Mississippi, and that would put Alabama on that wet east side. There's a Google Earth chart with the model plots. I guess you can pick your poison. You've got them anywhere basically from the Sabine Pass, that's the Texas-Oklahoma border, uh, to uh, what, around Panama City, but clearly... Most of the models take it to either coastal Mississippi or southeast Louisiana. Give you a couple of individual models that disagree with that. The European on the 12Z run has moved east to add to the great mystery of this. Uh, it is showing this thing coming in up toward uh, either Pensacola or Destin Wednesday on a slower track. The RPM is very similar. It's an outlier to the east. It's got the thing coming in uh, near Panama City. Uh, and this would be, let's see, on the uh, 28th, that would be Tuesday evening. So understand, this thing is still not carved in stone. Let's look at the uh, intensity forecast. And here's another problem. Not only is the forecast track a problem, but so is the intensity. And again, the models are seeing something to prevent this from really blowing up into a major hurricane. You got one that ramps it to a three, but most all of these models, including the ship's guidance, is showing it basically as a one, maybe a two, for a brief time before landfall. And uh, uh, there's clearly something up with that. Uh, you know, on the surface, you look at it, you got these uh, SSTs that are uh, awfully warm. Uh, You've got... Uh, uh, a pretty favorable upper air outflow pattern over this thing. And you think it might become a major system, but again, the models are saying no. So what does Hurricane Center say? This is the uh, package that was just released right before I did this update. This is the uh, uh, 4 o'clock Central Time uh, package. They have jog east. Uh, they bring it up toward the mouth of the uh, Pearl River uh, Wednesday afternoon with the remnant circulation basically up Interstate 55 through Jackson on up toward Memphis at the end of the week is a slower moving system. And uh, if this is correct, we would be on the wet side, the east side. And remember, as you look at that, the worst effects of this thing will be along and east of the landfall center on the coast. Uh, that would mean some significant storm surge damage for the coast of Mississippi and perhaps the coast of Alabama, Dauphin Island, uh, Fort Morgan, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach. 
the amount of damage in the storm surge would all depend on the intensity of this thing. Hurricane Center brings it up to a Category 2 at the time of landfall. Uh, and again, that's kind of on the high end of the guidance. So, you know, c- the confidence in the track, I'll say, is getting a little better. But keep in mind, you got some that bring it farther west than that. Uh, but the intensity is a great mystery. Uh, but so far, this thing has not gotten stronger. It is weaker than expected, and the models don't bring it up to a major hurricane. So let's keep our fingers crossed. And if this thing stays a one or a two, absolutely, there's going to be you know some damage and storm surge and flooding and all that on the coast. But even with a weaker system here, we will have the chance of isolated small tornadoes in the spiral bands uh, later this week. Uh, perhaps uh, Wednesday night or Thursday with a slower movement. Uh, But definitely we are on the side where there could be some issues, maybe with very heavy rain and flooding and possibly with isolated tornadoes. So that is not a very good track for us inland. But if this is a one or a two at the time of landfall, we're not going to have the widespread tree damage like we had with Ivan and the massive power outages. We won't have anything like that. So now the key is the intensity, and let's just hope those models are right. This is the uh, rain guidance from early this morning. The guys at HPC have updates twice a day. This was the morning update, and uh, this was assuming the track would come in toward Mobile Bay. This has still got 17 inches at Pensacola and 8.8 inches for Birmingham. I mean, this is drought-busting rain. And keep in mind, with the track farther west, then that heavier rain axis will be farther west. But clearly, we are in a position to get some really heavy rain and maybe some significant flooding. So for those people that live in flood-prone areas, just be aware that uh, we might have a problem. Let's walk you through the GFS. This is the operational GFS, the 12Z run, valid at uh, uh, 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon at 500 millibars. Got a heat bubble over Colorado and New Mexico. You can see the trough north of the state. And the question is, will that trough north of the state pull that thing north? Well, the GFS is saying no. Down below it, uh, it's over the Central Gulf on Tuesday. It is near the mouth of the Mississippi. This is 1 o'clock Tuesday afternoon. Wednesday, Isaac is just hugging the coast over toward Morgan City. And on Thursday, it's inland near Beaumont, Port Arthur, Texas. Uh, And, you know, with that thing staying so far south, it's still going to be showery here and and very humid and and, kind of unsettled. But we would not have flooding or probably not a tornado threat if that track is correct, if it winds up moving to southeastern Texas. But again, the the Hurricane Center track is not like that. Uh, The GFS is somewhat of an outlier to the west. Friday, what's left of the thing is on the uh, Texas-Oklahoma border near Paris, Texas. I know a lot of people are planning to fly to uh, Dallas for that football game on Saturday. And there's a look at Saturday, and the weather in Texas should be fine. The uh, remnant circulation, if this is right, is over Missouri. And again, it might be farther north and east than that. Uh, And again, around here, the confidence is high. Uh, the latter half of the week, we're going to stay in a very humid tropical air mass. And we might see extremely heavy rain and flooding Wednesday, Wednesday night, maybe into Thursday with a possibility of small tornadoes. But if it stays far enough to the south, we would not have the flooding issue. But whatever, it's going to be moist and wet at times. And there's Sunday, same deal. We stay in that very moist uh, air mass. So uh, that's it for this afternoon and the evening edition here. We'll uh, have another uh, video tomorrow morning, bright and early by uh, 7 o'clock or so. We'll be on the two-a-day schedule, and uh, we hope to catch you then. We'll, of course, have ABC 3340 News, the weekend edition tonight at 10. Ashley Brand will be there with an update. Thanks for watching. Have a great Sunday evening, and God bless.